Jeff the Killer, and Homicidal Lou, the Woods Brothers. After weeks of unexplained murders, the ominous unknown killer is still on the rise. And little evidence has been found to find him. A young boy comes forward and states that he survived one of the killer's attacks. He is here to bravely tell his story. I had a bad dream, and I woke up in the middle of the night, says the young boy. I saw that for some reason the window was open, even though I remember it being closed before I went to bed. I got up and shut it once more. Afterwards, I simply crawled under my covers and tried to get back to sleep. That's when I had a strange feeling, like like someone was watching me. I looked up and I nearly jumped out of my bed. There, in the little ray of light, illuminating from between my curtains, were a pair of eyes. These weren't regular eyes. They were dark and ominous, and they were bordered in black, and it just plain out terrified me. That's when I saw his mouth. A long, horrendous smile gashed into both of his cheeks, and it made every hair on my body stand up. The figure stood there watching me. Finally, after what felt like forever, he said it. A simple phrase, but said in a way only a madman could speak. He told me, Go to sleep. I let out a scream. That, that's what sent him at me. He pulled out a knife and aiming it at my heart, he jumped right on the bed. I tried to knock him off. I kicked, I fought, and I yelled. That's when my dad bursted in. And the man, he threw the knife and it went right into my dad's shoulder. He probably would have finished him off if one of the neighbors hadn't alerted the cops. They drove into the parking lot and ran right towards our front door. The man, he turned and he ran down the hallway and I heard a smash, like like glass breaking. I went out of my room and I saw the window that, that's pointing towards the back of my house. It was broken. So I walked over and looked out, only to see him vanish into the distance. I can tell you one thing. I will never forget that face. Those cold, evil eyes and that psychotic smile. They will never leave my head. Police are still on the look out for this man. If you see anyone that fits the description in this young man's story, please contact your local police department. Jeff and his family had just moved into a new neighborhood. His dad had gotten a promotion at work, and they thought it would be best to live in one of those fancy neighborhoods. Jeff and his older brother Lou couldn't complain. A new, better house? What was not to love? As they were getting unpacked, one of their new neighbors came by. Hello, I'm Barbara. I live across the street from you. Well, I just wanted to introduce myself and to introduce my son, she said, turning and calling her son over. Billy, these are our new neighbors. Billy came over, said hi, and then ran back to play in his yard. Well, said Jeff's mom, I'm Margaret. This is my husband, Peter, and my two sons, Jeff and Lou. They each introduced themselves, and then Barbara invited them to her son's birthday party. Jeff and his brother were about to object, when their mother said they would love to. When Jeff and his family were done unpacking, Jeff went up to his mom. Mom, why would you invite us to some kid's party? If you haven't noticed, I'm not some dumb little kid. Jeff, said his mother, we just moved here. We should show that we want to spend time with our new neighbors. Now we're going to that party, and that's final. Jeff started to talk, but stopped himself, knowing that he couldn't do anything. Whenever his mom said something, it was final. He walked up to his room and flopped down on his bed. Sitting there, looking up at the ceiling, suddenly he got a weird feeling. It wasn't a pain, but a weird feeling. He dismissed it as just some random feeling. Then he heard his mother call him down to get his stuff, so he got up and walked down to get it. The next day, Jeff walked downstairs to get breakfast and got get ready for school. As he sat there eating his breakfast, he once again got that feeling. 
this time, it was stronger, and it gave him a slight tuggy pain. But once again, he shrugged and dismissed it as nothing. As he and Lou finished breakfast, they walked down to the bus stop, and they sat there waiting for the bus, and then, all of a sudden, some kid on a skateboard jumped right over them, inches above their laps. They both jumped back in surprise. Hey, what the hell? The kid landed, turning back towards them, and kicked up his skateboard, catching it with his ha- in his hands. He seemed to be about hmm, 12, one year younger than Jeff, and he was wearing an Air Postal shirt and ripped dirty blue jeans. Well, well, well. It looks like we've got some new meat. Suddenly, two other kids appeared. One was super skinny, and the other was huge. Well, since you're new here, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Over there is Keith. Jeff and Lou looked over to the skinny kid. He had a dopey face that you would expect a sidekick to have. And he's Troy. They looked over at the fat kid. (laughs) Talk about a tub of lard. This kid looked like he hadn't exercised since he was crawling. And I, said the first kid, am Randy. Now, for all the kids in this neighborhood, there's a small price for bus fare, if you catch my drift. Lou stood up, ready to punch the lights out of one of the kid's eyes, when his friend pulled a knife on him. I had hoped you'd be more cooperative, but it seems we must do this the hard way. He walked up to Lou and took his wallet right out of his pocket. Jeff got that feeling again. Now it was truly strong, a burning sensation. He stood up, even though Lou gestured him to sit back down. Jeff ignored his brother and walked right up to the kid. Listen here, you little punk. Give back my brother's wallet or else. Randy put the wallet in his pocket and pulled out his own knife. Oh, And what will you do? Just as he finished the sentence, Jeff popped the kid in his nose. As Randy reached for his face, Jeff grabbed his wrist and broke it, making Randy scream. Jeff was easily able to grab the knife from his hand. Troy and Keith rushed Jeff, but he was too quick. He threw Randy to the ground, just as Keith lashed out at him. But Jeff ducked and stabbed him in the arm. Keith dropped his knife and fell to the ground, screaming and holding his arm. Troy again tried to rush him, too. Jeff didn't even need his knife. He just punched Troy straight in the stomach, and he went down. As he fell, he puked all over himself. Lou could do nothing but look in amazement at Jeff. Jeff, how did you? That was all he said. Right then, they saw the bus coming, and they knew... They were going to get blamed for the whole thing. So they started running as fast as they could. As they ran, they looked back and saw that the bus driver was rushing over to Randy and the others. As Jeff and Lou made it to school, they didn't dare tell what happened. All they did was sit and listen to the teachers. Lou just thought of it as his brother beating up a few kids. They were bullies, though. But Jeff knew it was more. It was something something scary. And he he got that feeling. He felt how powerful it was. The urge to just hurt. To maybe kill someone. He didn't like how it sounded. But he couldn't help feeling happy. He felt that strange feeling go away and stay away for the entirety of the rest of the school day. Even as he walked home, due to the whole thing being near the bus stop and thinking of it, he no, he decided mm, he wasn't going to take the bus anymore. He still felt happy. When he got home, his parents asked him how his day was, and he said in his somewhat ominous voice, It was a wonderful day. Next morning, he heard a knock at his front door. He walked down and found two police officers at the door. His mother turned and looked back at him with an angry look. Jeff! These officers told me that you attacked three kids, and that it wasn't a regular fighting, and that they were stabbed. Stabbed, son! Jeff's gaze fell to the floor, showing his mother it was true. Mom, they were the ones who pulled the knives on me and on Lou. Son, 
said one of the cops. We found three kids, two stabbed, and one having a bruise on his stomach. And we have witnesses proving that you fled the scene. Now what does that tell us? Jeff knew it was no use. He could say that him and Lou had been attacked, but there was no proof that it was not them who attacked first. They couldn't say that they were fleeing because the truth was, they were. So Jeff, he couldn't defend himself for Lou. Son, call down your brother. Jeff couldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. It was him who had beaten up all those kids, not his brother. Sir, it, it was me. I, I, I was the one who beat up those kids. Lou tried to hold me back, but he couldn't stop me. The cop looked at his brother, and they both nodded. Well, kid, looks like a year in juvie. Wait! Calls Lou. They look up to see him holding a knife. The officers quickly pull their guns and lock on to Lou. It was me. I beat up those little punks, and I have the marks to prove it. He lifts up his sleeves to reveal cuts and bruises as if he had been in a struggle. Son, just put down the knife, the officer told him. Lou held up the knife and dropped it on the ground, holding his hands up as he walked over to the cops. No, Lou! It was me! I did it! Jeff had tears running down his face now. <sighs> Poor bro. Time to take the blame for what I did. Well, take me away. The police led Lou out to the patrol car. Lou! Lou, tell him it was me! Tell him I was the one who beat up those kids! I did it! Jeff's mother put her hands on her, son on her son's shoulders. Jeff, please, you don't have to lie. We know. Lou did it. You can stop. Jeff watched helplessly as the police car sped off with his brother inside. A few minutes later, Jeff's dad pulled into the driveway, seeing Jeff's face and knowing something was wrong. 